Okay, so I wanted to tell you, recently I made a huge move. I was working at a major telecommunications company that does cybersecurity on the side. They have like a branch that does cybersecurity. And um, I, I did it uh, because it was a great opportunity. One of my former coworkers uh, gave me a um, – they referred me and uh, brought me into the company. It was a great company. They had great benefits. It was some of the best benefits I've had outside of the military. It was it was decent pay. And um, the only probably bad thing was that there was a lot of travel and that that eventually was the thing that got me out of there. And it was it was kind of stressful, too. And I was, I was having too many uh, personal issues that happened uh, at that at the time that I was working there. I worked for there for about two and a half, three years, and I was doing cybersecurity consulting for them. So what we would do is we would be we'd bring our expertise to smaller companies we we go to and it's a lot of companies and banks and hospitals and healthcare industries that you probably use to be honest with you <laughs> that i mean some of my was surprised were like damn i use this we were doing security compliance for them and um and the security compliance well it wasn't just security compliance it, it was basically we would do a bunch of um we would do a bunch of risk um assessments and those risk assessments would be things like uh, be we, we had like 15 different risk assessments. So 12, 12 to 15 different risk assessments, depending on what they chose. So we would do things like physical security assessments. We would do, of course, uh, network security assessments. There was like three of those. We did cloud based security assessments. We did um we did wireless security assessments. We take all of those and we would give them an overall view of what their security looks like. And then we would prioritize where the major risks were. And then we would talk to the C-level or director or upper level management to say, hey, this is where you should focus your energy because this is where we see the most risk. And the, the purpose of that was to reduce their, their security, uh, any kind of vulnerabilities they have. And they can focus all their time, money and energy and resources to that, you know, that highest level of risk in their organization that's what i was doing and it was it wasn't too bad i, I actually liked it you know um I, I fit right in over there the only I, we would do these reports which were really easy for me the only challenging thing i found was sometimes the clients were a bit um difficult to work with and it wasn't that they didn't know what they were doing or something like that it was just very high strung because cybersecurity. um it can be very stressful because you're dealing with you 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 know if you have a vulnerability a major vulnerability and you have to take that to the C CEO and say hey we have this we we have a bunch of legacy systems that are you know in this in this area here it, it, there's a lot of stress because you you, you don't want to be the person that to the bearer of bad bad news and we'd find those things and we'd say hey you have this stuff going on and there was just a lot of stress with that that that's probably the hardest part of the whole thing um, the travel wouldn't have been a big deal if I hadn't had so many personal issues happening with my family, my kids and, and everything that just all happened at once. So I had to, unfortunately had to leave cause I actually really love the people and everything. What did my daily life look like? Uh, so, um, we were mostly going off East coast time for me cause that's where most of my clients were. They'd give us like two or three clients, um, and you, you would work directly with them. So most of your day was coordinating the the scans and the assessments that you'd have to do. If you had to go to their site, you'd have to coordinate that. And they expect you to go do that on your own. Like it was very self-directed where they, it's, you have the client, like you'd run the meetings with them. You would coordinate when you're going to go there. You coordinate your uh, how many hours or how, how much time it would take to get there and who you're going to meet. And all of that stuff you'd have to do. And then the scans, we had a, like a separate scan team. We'd work with the scan team. We'd work with the program managers. We'd work with them. And we put together this report to deliver on a quarterly basis and sometimes annually. It depends on what kind of assessment it was because obviously you wouldn't do like a physical assessment every quarter because that, that wouldn't really make any sense because stuff doesn't change. But anyway, so that's what we would do is, is mostly meetings and coordination and doing and doing scans and reviewing the scans and then writing reports that that's your that was your whole day as a cybersecurity consultant at this organization I was with uh, where 
the main thing we did was deliver these reports and we would do really most of it was risk assessment type stuff. And I was very familiar with that because in the Department of Defense, we do a lot of security assessments and stuff. Um, so that's very different from where my main um, core specialties are, which is security compliance. We would dabble a little bit in security compliance, like every now and then we I would I would help them do like a PCI compliant uh, PCI audit or something like that. Or or we'd say, OK, here's here's how you your system would fit into a NIST 800 or here's how your system would fit into CIS controls. You do a little bit of that. But that wasn't really what we we're that would it was separate from what we were doing it was mostly risk assessment type stuff. So seeing where their risks are and determining that. So now that brings us to the next thing, which is information system security officer. So uh, information system security officer is more in compliance, it, it, the compliance space, security compliance and security compliance is making sure an organization is lined up with regulations, laws, industry standards. And that that doesn't have to be the federal government, which is mostly what I work with. It can be with hospitals. Hospitals have a certain standard that they're supposed to meet, one of which is called HIPAA, uh, where they have to make sure that they're protecting their patients' healthcare information and their digital records for the healthcare and stuff like that. Another example of industry standards would be PCI compliance. That's that's protection of the of uh, credit cards. So whenever you're at you're at a store and you're using your credit cards, they're supposed to have a separate network for those point of sale devices, so that it doesn't touch, like say, the Wi-Fi that's in the that's that's for the staff or for guest to, guest uh, to log in. So that has to be a separate protected network, so that the credit card data has its ha is protected. You know, so separate from your other networks. That's just one of the things you have to do. Another thing you have to do for PCI compliance is have the adequate uh, documentation for the security of the system, like making sure that net, we have network diagrams and next, making sure you have um, asset um, and inventory of all the assets, things like that. Those are all the, the, the types of things that you would have to do for PCI. And that's that, those are just two examples. But you've got CIS compliance. You've got ISO 27,001 compliance. You got many different, different countries have their own security compliance and different industries like, you know, have their own compliance. So my, my um, specialty is in NIST 800 um, security compliance. NIST 800 is, is what the federal government has created and adopted as the main source of security controls. Secu security controls is a set of security features that protect the organization's primary assets. That means like your main server that has all the social security numbers on it, your main server that has all the secret uh, secret data on it, the main server that's holding all the, the maps of different parts of the world. You know, those, that's what you call an asset. So those are just some of the examples of, and those are some of the difference. Now, w one of the things that, what the daily what it looks like from on a day-to-day -day basis for an ISO. Um, just to kind of compare this versus uh, versus uh, the consulting I was doing. So it's also a lot of meetings. Security is a lot of, of coordination. Cybersecurity is a lot of coordination with different organizations because you're you're having to meet with different uh, subject matter experts like you you're not necessarily the person who's locking down the, the that windows server that's going to be a server type person you know, that's going to be a person like a system admin who's specializes in linux red hat network administration and windows uh 2019 uh active directory servers you know so you you are going to coordinate with them. So in ISO, that's what they do. They're coordinating with these different the firewall guy, the uh, the privacy person. They're they're coordinating with all these different people to make sure that the organization has a certain level of security. And so it is a lot of meetings. It's a lot of meetings with a lot of different people, and that's probably the main difference between the the meetings. Like an ISO is going to have a meeting with all kinds of people throughout the organization. 
um, one organization, whereas a consultant is going to have a meeting with just a few people at different organizations. Like me, I had like three or four clients at a, any given time, and I would have to coordinate with the, there was like a main point of contact I would talk to, big two or three main points of contact, and every now and then I'd, I'd meet like a C-level exec, but I was talking to three or four different organizations, whereas an ISO is talking maybe one organization, and there might be other sub-organizations, but they're all one. You're talking about many people in that organization, so you're going really deep in in all of the details and and stuff and making sure that all the securities is uh, is in place. Now, it wasn't it's not like an enforcement role. Typically, you are more like a news reporter. And what I mean by that is a lot of people think that you're the police and you're going to come and bust in down doors and say, hey, this we got to secure this server. That's not really your your job. Like You might point things out, but the person who has to be the enforcer is going to be the management because they're the ones Things come down from management, so they have to be the ones to enforce that stuff. Now, if you if you happen to be the voice piece, the mouthpiece to tell them, "Hey, the CIO just said this," you know, you're you're just the reporter. You're just reporting to them. Hey, this is what happened. I, we have to obey what is going on with this organization's policies. Here's what we have to do. So that's the main differences between a, a security consultant and an information security officer. The reason why I quit my job as a, a consultant and went over to, and now I'm going to back to information security officers, has more to do with not the work per, in, per se. It was It's more like the travel, like the organization I was at was paid really good, had great, the, one of the best benefit packages I've ever had, but it was too much travel and t I had too much stuff going on. So, and, and I had too many clients. It was getting a little stressful. Plus I had family stuff I had to deal with. So that's the reason why I, I transitioned over. Um, and now I'm, I'm going to somewhere where 